What is up guys, it is Lewis and welcome back to another episode of Retying the Knot. Today we got Confessions, which is a new track, I don't know if it's on uh, self-titled or any uh, subsequent albums after that. But yeah, sorry there wasn't a video on Saturday night, I had work and couldn't be bothered editing on a time cramped weekend. Um, yeah. We've got four, rec four, four records, four tracks left uh, of this record. Then we moved on to self-titled, which I know already. So it'll be cool just to share with you what I like about those songs in that record and records following. So without f any further ado, let me uh, just um, go to confessions and play said track. Ah, snug. Ooh, bass intro, that's pretty cool. It always does that, I don't know why. Ooh, proggy. Kind of have, has that Primus feel to it. Because the bass of What's happening? Ooh. Trim with a finger. Or oh, is Paul using a pick? I don't know. Fix! And it has that James Hetfield raspiness in the background. There's the um, Fred Durst vocals. The bass is very high in the mix. Almost had a, a hook. Huh. And his vocals is actually really well here. Distortion on the bass. Ooh. Another lead! Second song on the record that has a lead. Very tasty lick lead work there. Damn, just straight chords. Okay, like a Bongo drum. This is a very This 
This is a mild sound fix. It is a it is a chorus. Swap. Okay, flee. <laughs> no, not the next song, not the next track. Confessions. Well, that was a very, very clean song, and Anders vocals was was one of the high points in the song. Oh, the song had so many high points. That lead there was was so melodic. Like, it's like a proper, like, lead work you'd hear in, like, a Stone Sour song you have in a jazzy, proggy Slipknot song. The That chorus hook, you want to know, you want to see, you want to feel, you want, I want to be. It's, it, what does it remind me of? That's what it is. I mean, it's uh, Merciful Fate, the 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 uh, mega song, the um, what do you call it? Medley, the medley that Metallica did. I know, uh, uh, so hear you cry. That's uh, that portion of the song reminds me of that hook. Um, the hook reminds me of that, I should say. Um, damn, and the bass. God damn, Paul, Paul went ham and Paul. Paul was high in the mix. There wasn't, there hasn't been any high bass things at all. Like I heard, oh, it helps that the uh, guitar was clean and the entire entire song was clean. There was barely any like distortion on the guitar, so it was very very surprising for this. I'm surprised they even had a song that isn't played on acoustic. But is actually clean the entire time. Like he had just stray, just acoustic like bar chords up to neck. I wonder. I wonder if it was in like a standard tuning, or they played these chords in a drop tuning. I don't. I don't really know. Because you know he is on that good. Yeah, that 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 tremolo bass thing. Like, like I don't know if because I I know in Slipknot the one that we know. Is that he uses a pick, but in that it looked sounded like his fingers, unless he was doing that. If it was his fingers, it'd be more impressive. But it still pr sounded pretty cool. And at the end, it got into that uh, Red Chili Peppers type flea, like flea John Frusciante duel they usually have in the in the songs. But in this song, I really want to know who uh, wrote this. It doesn't really sound like anything Sean would write or anything Anders would write or just anything the Slipknot we know would write. I mean, Corey Taylor writes this shit all the time because it's fucking Stone Sour and now CMFT. But damn, there's a lot there. And it's very enjoyable. Anders' vocals works there very well and it's Fred Durst appeared there. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to imitate Fred Durst, but that's automatically what my ears go towards. That type of rapping. When Corey does it, it sounds like he's just screaming words, but but it doesn't really sound like rapping in Slipknot, but in this one, it's definitely rapping. It says here, the meaning, not by Anders or Sean. The meaning, confessions is a letter from a father to a son from whom he's been separated for about 17 years. It arrives about the time of the boy's first transformation. It was written by Donny Steele, one of the guitarists. Only Paul liked the song. I fucking wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Paul did... From what I know, Paul did push the chi the more mellow songs on the records. That I know, I know for a fact he pushed Snuff to be... 
a thing in the limelight because the um, road runner was like, it doesn't sound like Slipknot and shit, shit like that, but Paul was run. It's going to be on the fucking record. Um, that's why Paul's a fucking G. Um, that's why Snoff is dedicated to Paul nowadays. Um, and, and now Joey, after the story of him tracking it late at night without calling no Calling without Corey knowing until the next day. I know this doesn't fit Slipknot now, but they should remake this. Fair point. Um, I I think Jim would most likely do stuff like this more so than um, Mick, because Mick is like he likes the mentally downpicking uh, EA string chords and all that. This track is so funky. Yep. Yes, it definitely is. For some reason, listening to the song makes me want to cry. It opens a side of me inaccessible to humans. Only music can reach it. I feel... It... Yeah, it... Those... The chorus, like... It will, in my opinion, hand his best vocals effort. At least as a clean vocalist. That wasn't, like, non-swearing. I mean, like, as a... Yes, a singing... His uh, singing ability shined out for that. A lot of the comments saying, uh, rest in peace, Paul Gray, and how Slipknot has helped people uh, with not, with any, without any family, yada, yada, yada. Always my fave ch tune off the album. Yeah, it is a very listenable track, and I can easily see why Slipknot didn't want to go into this direction. But it was a pr it was a pretty underdog competitor for this record. Even though it's in the latter half of the record, it's still pretty pretty good. I don't know if any of the other songs are going to sound anything like this. I didn't think bloody that jazz thing from uh, Bitch Slap would appear in um, other songs, but it, it did in only one I think, and it did in um, uh, did in this and the main thing. <sighs> I've been rambling on far too long this episode, I do apologize. That being said, my name has been Lewis, and this has been Confessions on the Mate Feed Kill Repeat record. What do you guys think about it? What do you think about the vocals, the instrumental? I highly, I highly enjoy this, and I would recommend this to any Slipknot fan or any uh, music fan out there. Which is everyone. Um, yeah. Let me know anything uh, about this song or bracket or Anders in the comments below. And, um, yeah, that's about it. See ya.